Hi guys, welcome back to yet another YFTV. Um, a bit different again this morning to what we have been doing in the past. Unfortunately for you, mine is the only face you will see this morning. There's no James, no Gemma, um, no guest speakers, it's just me. Um, but that will all change tonight. We have another Zoom call. Um, so hopefully it'll be really good to see you there if you can make it out. Um, it's hosted by our very own Sarah Adams. So I'm sure she's got something really fun for us planned. And um, it'd be really, really good to see you there. This week's reading... Um, is one that I'm sure lots of you will he have heard before and hopefully that'll make it a wee bit easy to remember it and uh, put it into practice. Um, it's a really common one if you've ever been to a wedding. It's a very common passage to be read at a wedding. It comes from 1 Corinthians 13 and it's verses 1 to 3 that we'll read. It says this, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Now this is quite a bit, bit of a wordy passage um, and there's lots of imagery and lots of words here that we can break down um, and hopefully take a couple of lessons from. So the, the passage at the surface is about love and it seems to say that, that love is clearly more important than all this other stuff. Um, if we don't love people, then the rest of it has no, no point, no real reason. And this is true, um, and it's good, but I think there's, a, there's some good wee things, good wee takeaways uh, that we can learn here and um, think about as we all go into various situations or our different lives. Um, I'm sure there's something here for everyone. So the first part about the clanging symbols, this is really the bit that, uh, as I prepared this, that spoke to me the most. So I'm, I'll explain why this spoke to me and then hopefully that'll help you guys understand how it can speak to you. The first part says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. So basically, words spoken not out of love are just that, words. They don't have any real value. When I was preparing this, I kind of had to think to myself, I was challenged, why am I saying what I'm saying? If I prepare this wee message for you guys, but I don't prepare it in love, if I don't prepare it in a way that is to build you up and help you guys out, then what I'm saying is useless. It's just words. It's just noise. Even though I'm preparing a message that's from the Bible and it's scripture, if I don't prepare it in love spiritually, it's useless to you guys. It's useless to me. That was quite a big thought for me. It's quite a big challenge when I'm preparing this. Is Why am I doing this? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I doing this only because I put my name down when it came up in the in the group chat discussion? Or am I doing this because I really want to help you guys and build you up and teach you about God? So for me, that was something that I had to really think about. And I hope that that can show you that as we progress through the passage, that actually it's not necessarily what we do, but our attitudes that matter. So this similar idea can be applied to the next part. It says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not lo have love, I am nothing. So this part means basically for us, that if you're reading your Bible and learning things about the Bible on an intellectual level, you're reading it and you're understanding it and you're, you're looking into what the context means and you're really learning things about the Bible, but you're not concentrating on God's love and the relationship that he wants to have with you and develop with you. Spiritually, what you're doing isn't very useful. If you're only reading your Bible to learn the answers for YF, then you're not going to grow spiritually or get to know God any better through that. Now, that's not to say that knowing things about the Bible and learning about it as a book and as a historical document isn't useful. It's, it's great. That's a brilliant thing to do. But to grow spiritually through reading the Bible, you need to have an attitude of learning about God and getting to know him better for it to be of any use to you. And I want you to think about that again as it's not so much that what you're doing isn't good. It's just that your attitude is the key. So when you're reading your Bible, you need to have the attitude that you're learning about God and who God is and that he is there present with you. And that it's that attitude that will make reading your Bible so much more spiritually valuable than if you were to just memorize it like you would a book at school. So the last verse talks about giving money and doing things it says if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love 
I gain nothing. So this talks a bit more about what we would do out in the world. It shows that actually it's not the things that we do that make a difference, but again, it's our attitudes to how we do things. If, if we're at school or at work and we're forcing ourselves to act in a way, in a certain way because we think it's what our parents or our pastor would want us to act like, then, but we're, we're a bit resentful about it. We don't really, that's not how we would naturally act. That We're just forcing ourselves to do that. To God, our actions aren't that useful for building up his kingdom. We need to have an attitude of love and of grace to other people and then let that attitude determine how we act towards other people so that we're not doing it out of resentment and out of uh, being forced to, but we're actually doing it out of our attitude that God is in charge and God's in control and that we want to live the way he wants us to live and it's we're focused on his love for us and that determines how we act towards others. So as you think about that and as we go out into the world this week, I hope that you remember it's just, it's our attitudes and it's how we respond to things because of God's love for us. And it's that more important to have this attitude of love and grace and to remember our relationship with God. And it's much more important to do that than it is to do what we feel like we should be doing and the, to read our Bible because we feel like we should out of obligation or, or just going through the motions or because it's our habits now that actually it's, it's our attitude and our, our response to God because of what he's done for us. So hopefully that helps. I'll just pray um, and that'll be us wrapped up. Dear God, thank you for your just great love for us. Thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us, Lord, and that you want a relationship with us. God, I pray that you would help us as we read this passage to remember that it's actually about your love for us and how our attitudes respond to that. Then what we do as, as people ourselves, Lord, that actually you want our hearts to be in the right place and not just the things that we do. God, I pray that you would help us to remember that as we go out into the world and into our lives this week. In your name, amen. So guys, that's us for this morning. Hopefully I'll see you tonight on the Zoom call. Cheers. Cheers.